Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. All right, guys, we are officially live for uh, week 18 of the new member webinar. We are currently looking at and hooting and hollering over CGIX today. I had some plan on this that, you know, I already, I already shorted this today, so this was, this was my chart. But uh, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the chart right here because I thought that anything over this level would be bullish, but we got a massive stuff. I wanted anything under 550. So again, you know, anybody that just basically uh, for catching up, anybody who just chased this big candle just got absolutely dumped on and simultaneously it just careened through VWAP. And now it's, now it's feeling kind of weak. Now here's the thing. You have to keep in all the thought processes that are going along with this. This is still not entirely backside where it is just because it's under VWAP and simultaneously this is a micro float, guys. This is like 1 million volume. So can it rip back and go to new highs? Of course it can. Who knows what it's going to do? But I, I, I think it's pretty weak under 550. So we'll see what it does. It's at 580. I'm not saying just jump in this freaking thing. I'm saying it's very much no man's land right now. It could go up. It could go down. Obviously, it, can, it really can go back to new highs being so thin that it is and being such a small float. But that was pretty nasty of a move right there for longs which just put a lot of one side in trouble. And now I'm, uh, now I'm looking for a break under that 550. I really want that break because if it breaks 550, I think that this can probably go back to like 450. So we'll see, you know, we'll see. Again, it's very thin. Uh, these are my trades this morning. So let me just talk about this real quick. And then uh, you guys can ask questions or we'll talk about whatever you guys want to talk about. But so this morning was one of the first days in a long time that I incorporated a lot of FOMO. And I don't know why, like I literally don't know why. You know, me and Bao, I didn't even find out he was shorting this pre-market until I was like, in a, you know, in my Val and Alex's group chat where I was like, fuck dude, I fucked up on CGIX. I just shorted pre-market like an idiot. And here's what happened, man. I took the L really quickly because I didn't size too much or anything, but I took the L because I was like, you know what, man? Like, it, I, I, I don't trade pre-market. That's not my game. I never trade pre-market. That's in my opinion, it's kind of a fool's game. You know, if you can make money on it, that's fantastic. I know James does really well. Dave Vaughn does well. But that is my personal rule list of not trading pre-market. So I got a little FOMO because I got the borrow. And I knew not a lot of people had it. It was up a lot. It kind of had a little bit of a nice candle pre-market. And when I saw it kind of, I just, as soon as I got in, I was like, I have no idea why I just FOMO'd myself. So I got out immediately. Then I just did what I do my process every single day. I saw the opening death candle. That was what I wanted to see, this candle right here. And then I took action, as you guys can see, short a little bit. Of course, with micro floats, the key is to nail and bail. We talked about that earlier in chat. That is basically the number one way to handle things like this. So I nailed and bailed, and then that's basically it. And then, er, and then later, I let the squeeze happen, which I didn't think it would be that volatile, but it did. I missed it, thank God. I, I wasn't still holding or anything. And then I just took care of the other death candle. So when this happened, you know, I got in and then, and then, you know, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> uh, does anybody have any questions? Let's see what this is going to do. Any questions guys on this chart specifically, or does anybody have like anything that they want to add or just anything? Man, this is a, uh, 
Oh, I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted. I'm so tempted to go size in this, but I'm not going to. No size on micro floats, especially the late day. I don't. I don't do that. No, definitely no size. But I am watching this sucker. Uh, how many bullets did I have? I had uh, a good amount, man. I go by fourths, so I got in. Uh, I didn't do too much pre-market, so I just did a little bit there, and then I couldn't get much located this morning. Battle could only get two thousand. I think I was only able to get um, what was it, fifteen hundred or something. On so I, I couldn't get much at all, man. I there there were like no locate, and then they become available later. I found out they were all available like during this squeeze, or I can't remember when I found out they were all available. I was like, oh shit, I would have slammed the hell out of this. So this was it was not much size at all. That's why I tried to scalp it all day. Lack of locates. Uh, let me go back. Maybe I missed a question or two. Better late than ever. What's up, John? CGI, yep, it's a microflow beast, man. I'm telling you right now, you gotta be careful. If you uh, if you chase something like this, you on a death candle, you gotta be fucking quick, man. You gotta be quick. You gotta be quick, just like that. You gotta be quick, man. You gotta nail and bail. Um, these things can totally rip back. That's just the nature of micro flows. This is not done yet, man. This is not done whatsoever. This is very much no man's land. This could be a short, it could be a long. It's a 50-50 until we get a very convincing break under 550, in my opinion. You know, everybody sees charts different, but that's what I'm seeing right now. Um, see, this is not a convincing break. It breaks wicks right back up. We need a, oh shit, look at this. Do you guys see this? Wow, we got some really good examples today. Finally just broke 10. Absolutely nasty. Dude, this thing, Alex literally called under 19 in our video watch list this morning. He was like, bro, under 19, this thing is done. And look at this, this is just ridiculous. This is ridiculous, man. So again, I hope you guys are watching our video watch list every single day. I hope you're taking advantage of the content that we put out and uh, making some money in the process. That's all we can. Uh, that's all we can hope for. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Borrow TV. And I've been looking for low all. Yeah, I hear you, man. What's up, guys? Came in late. What's up, Mike Tran? On your death candle play, how do you decide an entry? So it's kind of tough, man. It just depends. But the bigger the candle, I'll usually go in more or chase a little bit lower. But if it's like a little candle, like I'm going to go in a little bit. Like I'm not going to go in a ton. Like I'll throw a starter on. Like I consider this a really nice size candle, specifically this one. I'm going to go in. Like I'm going to I'm gonna hit a little bit at lows and then I'm going to add on pops. But I usually give to about half the death candle. That's kind of my strategy. I give to about half the line for sure. Uh, uh, where risk, uh, uh, where are you talking about MU? Are you talking about pre-market? Oh, you're talking about like right now for like, what are you talking about, buddy? Oh, when I traded, um, I was actually, I think, let's see. Oh, I, I always give to the top of the death candle, but this had so much range. I give to about 60%. So there's your guide. So here, I'll show you right here. Let me delete these. This is literally like my personal bread and butter. So like I'll get in after death candle and then I will give it to about 60% range. See that? Like maybe, maybe right there. It just depends, man. It just depends. I feel it out. So it, it's always, it's always changing. Like I'm watching the tape, I'm feeling the stock, I'm seeing, you know, how it's testing, but I usually give to about at least half to 60%, something like that. Yeah. Something like that. So it's, it's just kind of always changing, but I always usually have a stop in place. If I don't have a stop, then my finger is literally on the trigger for as soon as I see that little move. This would have been tough if you didn't have a hard stop, man. That's why we try to teach how to stay safe so well, because man, if you didn't have a hard stop on that, bro, that's, that's some, that's some tricky shit. Let me tell you, this was a hell of a run, man. I can't even remember. Did this halt? I literally can't remember. Did this halt or not? But if it, if it didn't, dude, you got to be fucking quick, man. Yeah, so right now it's just kind of, it's just kind of in no man's land right now. Where are you guys at? How's the weather? It's finally raining in Cali today and I feel like so out of place. I'm like, what the hell is all this? <laughs>
all right, where am I? So let's, uh, yep, I'm just watching this thing, man. I'm telling you right now, I'm like, I'm like, I'm just stalking this thing. Uh, do, do, do. Also, for Deathline, do you ever place limit orders that when your trigger price is hit? I do not. I, I pretty much slam. I, unless, unless I'm limiting when it breaks, then I have time to limit. But I'm never doing like preset limits or things like that for a Deathline. I'm literally just, I'm going, man. I, I, you know, things like that. I hope that makes sense. But I, it's just, if it's a very tight spread, man, I may market order in a starter or, or an ad. And then, and then obviously, like, as high, the higher it goes, and like, if I'm trying to get a second or third or fourth add on, then I'm actually. I'm definitely doing limit orders because I want to fill where I want to fill. You know what I mean? But good question. So I took a little bit on that VWAP pop. I may cover a little bit here. I'm a little, little pulled focus. All right, covered a little bit right there. Yeah, just covered about a third or a fourth of my position. I'll show you guys the chart when I'm done, but I, I, I took a little up there while I was talking. I just don't want anybody following me. Please don't follow me. The last thing I want you to do is follow. I already covered, I already cushioned myself, so now I can set a stop, just like the last week that we did this, uh, that if it goes back up, I'm willing to risk a little bit. You know, I'm up on the day, so I'm willing to give back a little bit of gains on something like this because I just cushioned myself on that drop. So, like, maybe, I think I have, what do I have, like, in the 70s average, I'm willing to you know, go to like 610 because I'm small size. Again, at the end of the day, man, you want to size down to the point where you don't really notice it. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's fun bucks. It's like after the first hour and all the good money's made, it's like after this, you're waiting for hour lines and you're just playing fun bucks. You know, and that's relative to any trader. You know, fun bucks for somebody might be $20 versus 10,000. I don't know your account size, but the point is it's just size down relative to your account size, and that's the best piece of advice I can give you. One second, let me just put a hard stop in. The rest. Cool. So just paid myself a little bit, now have a hard stop in. Boom. Uh, do, do, do. Let's see, what else? Your, where am I? Your trade on CGIX shows the importance of being able to take the loss that you're able to reattack when your setup shows. Yes, absolutely, Cedric. One of the number one things we teach, man, is just you got to be able to take a loss, bro. You got to be able just to admit defeat. Like, I, I hate, dude. I have an ego in trading, man. I have an ego in life. Like, I'm trying to get rid of it as much as I can, but I'm like that guy that, like, if someone flipped me off while I'm driving, I'm like, dude, what the fuck? Like, let's throw down. But, like, I try not to be that guy. And I try not to take that in trading. Because, like, I'm a really nice guy. But the point is, is, like, ego is tough, man. If you bring ego into trading and you think your shit don't stink and you can't take a fucking loss, you're dead, dude. You're dead. I suffered for the first three years of my trading career because I had such an ego that, dude, when I, like, I didn't really lose. But when I did, man, I would lose big, dude, because I couldn't, I couldn't. I couldn't cut a loss. Does that make sense? So again, guys, it's like the reason why MIC was formed. Let me go back to like the whole, like, if anything, like package of what MIC is. MIC was formed by three traders, you know, myself, Bal, and Alex, who wanted to create a club that not only had an opportunity for traders to, you know, trade with others and experience, you know, how fun it is to get opinions of others and be around others like-minded people, we wanted to create a club that was exactly what we would have wanted to see when we were first trading. So again, it's like, dude, what would we have wanted to see? We would have wanted to see the community that we built now. So now that it's here, if you guys are coming in and you're like a brand new trader, you've never traded the markets and this is like your first year, you're so lucky, man. I had to learn this shit all by myself, trial and error, just like everybody did, you know, six or seven years ago when there were like no resources out there, man, or just Nothing that vibed well, at least with me or, you know, a couple people like that or places. I did. I never vibed with any other place. So, you know, we were like, man, what do we need to do for MIC that's going to be like if we did it all over again? So, as you guys can see, man, we're all about, you know, riding winners, cutting losers, you know, line the line strategies. We've got our proprietary trading strategies. We, we keep you guys safe. I've never heard any service, club, whatever you want to call it. I've never heard any guru, mentor, talk about hard stops and how to set them. And we've got tons of videos on that. We are going to keep you safe because like I said, for three years, man, 
I freaking, I got destroyed because I never put a hard stop in. You know what I mean? Like I would make a ton of money and then lose a ton of money and then make a ton of money and then lose a ton of money. But the problem about something like that is because I had to take so many L's in my career, bad habits were formed while you guys do not need to do those bad habits right now. If you learn good habits from the get go, you are going to have good muscle memory. I've still got a ton of shit like Bao that I'm trying to shake off my shoulder because it's so ingrained because of so many years of lifting the dumbbell of mental stops, you know, and not hard stuff. So right now, you know, I'm short a little bit of CGIX with a hard stop. I got a hard stop in, dude. No, it, it's, it ain't going to kill me. And, you know, sizing, of course, is something. So it's like, you know, there are certain times of the day to size, and then there are other times of the day where you don't size. I'm not sizing right now. No fucking way. It's mid-late day, dude. You size in the morning. That's the key, man. You size in the morning, get your size off, and then just do what works late day and see if you can make a little couple bucks if you have the right process and you're following the right, the, the right plan of attack that, that works for you, that you back test and back test and back test. And I'm ranting. Looks, uh, looks like stocks, uh, hotkeys being like a sniper. No, nah, hotkeys are total overblown garbage, man. You do not need to trade hotkeys or anything. Oh, here we go. It's really trying to break that there. It's trying to break that 550. There we go, baby. Let's let's go. Give me something. Give me something here. All right. Cover a little bit more at 50. Nope. Nope. Didn't get it. I'll set it though. I want it. I want to get that. Shit. I didn't get it. Yeah, I didn't get it. Oh well. I have my, I'm just going to put fantasy orders in. I got a hard stop. What am I doing? I'm trying to micromanage this. I'm just going to put them in. One second, guys. I'm just trying to put a last cover. I'll put like a fantasy cover or something. Got small off at 514. Let's see if I could put it like, I'll put the rest at like 4. 86 maybe something like that actually probably lower let's go to 460 i'll do a fantasy cover and a hard stop see the reason why i don't adjust my plan is because i want a fantasy cover or my original plan after i'm cushioned so like watch this so i'm gonna put like a four like i can put like a 455 right like that's really low that's a fantasy cover but i still have a hard stop in at break even where i was on the remainder of the shares so that's the key, man. That's the key is I don't want to chase and add, add, add. I had an original plan of original size and now I'm just adjusting my stop so it doesn't fuck up my average. I've got a 70s average right now. I'm literally in the 70s. I've got a 571. So the point is, is like, that's the point, man. It's like, there's so many ways to trade. This is what works for me. You find out what works for you. It's just simple like that, man. It's, it, it, it's trading's not easy, but, but it is simple. So I wait for death candles. I wait for backside. I, you know, I said I wanted the 550 break. When it broke, I scaled the pop. Uh, I'm just doing it according to plan. And that's just all you can do each day is just follow your plan. That's all I can say. I'm totally all over the place. I hope you guys are learning. <laughs> are you guys getting to keep, keep it simple, man. The weather is miserable in Norway right now. Oh my God, I hate this time of year. Damn, dude. Uh, what's it? What, new Asgard. <laughs> Cedric, Cedric's cold in New Asgard, man. Somebody get this guy a, a hammer and a coat. Sorry to hear, brother. Norway, that's sick, though, dude. I'm actually Norwegian, man. That's, that's a lot of fun, man. Now, hopefully, we do a MIC meetup around there one day. That'd be freaking sick, man. Yeah, I swear to God, man. I'm like 20% I, I'm like Norwegian. So freaking rare, right? Can you believe that shit? I'm, I'm, I'm totally Norwegian, man. I'm proud of that shit. I'm a Viking. Uh, 50s and Cloudy and Queens. Damn, bro. I don't know how you East Coasters do it, man. I, I don't know how you do that shit, dude. I'm serious. Like you spot, I like it. Hotkeys cause so much FOMO, man. That's the thing. Let me talk about that for a second. Guys, I've never used hotkeys in my life, but let me tell you, when you learn the DOS charting or you learn Sterling or anything like that, it is very simple. Oh, nice, Sweden. It is very simple to get in the stock. Let me, let me repeat that. It is very simple and quick to get in a stock, just the normal DOS or Sterling or Realtek, whatever you use. If you add hotkeys on that, all you have to basically do is breathe and you're in a stock. I do not want that. 
nobody should want that dude that's ridiculous you are going to find an excuse to click that button because it's so freaking easy you blink and you're in a stock i don't want that man i want to be able to press that button because do you know how many times in my career i've literally like accidentally grazed the button and i come back and i was like oh shit i've been long or i've been short this shit like what the hell <laughs> like the point is man is like sometimes things can be too convenient <laughs> But yeah, guys, so so check this out. So let me go over, so look at this, man. Look at Alex's trade today. This is my trade. Look, look, look at Alex's trade today, $15,000. Yes, that number is going to seem unrealistic to some people and like, I'll never get there or whatever. But dudes, I'm not kidding. Alex literally just followed his process that we teach every single day at MIC. We have video library on all of this. He did the two strategies that we teach every single day. He got his locates, he followed his plan, and he used size on one of these because there was an A-plus setup for him, or it was a really good, you know, quote-unquote, just really good setup. So, you know, like I showed you, I showed you what he did on CGIX, and I showed you what he did on Arrow. He made 15 Gs, dude. He fucking can go out and buy a Rolex today off today's train. Yesterday, he made 10. So, again, man, it's like, it's just in the process. Would Alex be able to do this without a process? Hell no, man. Hell no. But that's why we every single day have a set of rules that we follow, that we come back to. And if we break our rules, then you got to take a minute and breathe and say, okay, like this morning, like this morning, like I'll show it one last time. Uh, CGIX, like where's my, where's my chart? I totally fucked up in the morning or I can't find it, but I'll just show you what I did. So I shorted right here. I chase this kind of like this big red candle, but dude, I don't trade pre-market, man. I don't do it. I just... I've never had success trading free market. It's just, I get, I get like, I get like a, like a, like a male, like a dog chasing a mailman. I get too excited, right? I'm like, Ooh, break down. Okay, let's go. And then if this is the top, then it's going to be down here by open. Then I can get some real size. Screw all that, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, brother. So the point is, is like, dude, this is not what I do. That's not my process. This is my process. I wait for these. I wait for the breakdowns. Then I short the pops and then I wait for it to squeeze and top out. And then I hit the breakdowns again. That's a breakdown. And then right here, the only reason why I scaled, I think it was this one, if I'm looking correctly. Um, yeah, I was right here. The only reason why I scaled this particular jump was because it's what we teach in MIC every single day. Uh, I think I got literally exactly right there. Every single day we teach the structure and time of trading. When we go into zombie hour, which is after the first hour, like this, we are going outer lines to outer levels and playing smaller size. So I sized down because it's not backside. And I was going to scale up to seven very calmly and into the pre-market high of day. And it worked. And then I nail and bail because it's front side. Front side shorts require front side covers. Uh, let me show you a really cool example. Bow actually just did. He, uh, let, dude, let me show you this real quick. How sick is this, man? I think this was an OTC, OTC pink sheet or whatever. I, dude, I never traded those in my life. Literally, I never. Oh, QBIO. That's right. Dude, look how sick this is. Bow freaking top take the shit out of us. Where is it? Dude, look at, look at this trade from Bow, man. How sick is that, dude? So he scaled, uh, let's see, I'm zooming in, 210, 210 to 230. That was his plan. 210 to 230. Look at this. Oh, let me go. Uh... So let's look into why that was his area, right? Like, why was that Bow's area? And then obviously he paid himself on the way down. I wonder if he's still holding, but why was this his area, correct? Let's go to the daily chart. Again, lines. We teach lines. Why do we preach lines? Because they fucking work, dude. Because they fucking work. If you were, let me take the studies off. If you were to look at this chart subjectively, right? Like, you literally just go like this you know, don't look at the day that it's running, go, where is a psychological level where people are probably really going to get out if this goes? Bow called 250 in chat. Why? Well, here, this, you can see it better on bigcharts.com. But dude, look at that line. Look at the two line and then look at 250. Where do you think people are going to hit, dude, that you can eyeball it, man? You can literally eyeball it. Two is the first one. So you see how it's reacting around that level. And then 250, man, look at that. It, it's no coincidence that these things come down off the low. Like, look at this. This is why we teach lines, bro. This is why. 
Does that make sense? So if you're a new member, we're going to teach you this. This is not a game of gambling. This is a game of educated risk based on calculations. You want to see a really fantastic example from yesterday? I'll show you this. AGRX. Let's go to this. I'll show you a really good example. Me and Bao had the exact same line. I even drew it out. So pre-market, this was running. This is what AGRX was pre-market yesterday. I actually said to uh, my, one of my tab members outside of Bao and Alex, I said, dude, this stock has no meat on the bone. You know where the short is? I said, let's go back to the 15-day chart. I said the short, and, and I sent this to him. I said the short's at 180, 190 scale. What do you see? It ran, it got some meat on the bone, it needs meat, and it ran right into previous resistance. There's a reason why we play lines. That is the outer line. This free market is an inner line. If you were hitting this right here, you're hitting an inner line. And you're most likely gonna get squeezed because while it's an inner line, it just doesn't have any meat on the bone. You see what I'm saying? So like, here, let me go back to new member. Yeah, sick man, that really did. Um, so again, guys, the outer line, so 590 was it. 590 was it. And Dow took advantage of that yesterday, or at least he saved his chart. Uh, let me show you. I'm just going to try to give you guys really good examples of why MIC is what it is and what we and why so many members in our group are learning. So many, dude, so many members in our group are learning, man, and making money, dude. So freaking many. It's so cool to see, man. We don't embellish shit, dude. People are really learning, man. All right, let me see if I can find this stock because he nailed it. Um, I think it was late day, right? Let me see. Hold on one sec, guys. I, I know it's on here. Like, I remember Bow nailed it. Where was this freaking thing? Well, that's today. Hold on. I'm going to find this. I'm going to find this. I'm motivated. Let's find this. Did anybody save his chart? Whatever, <laughs> Mike Tran, did you save it? Oh, th wait, there we are. Look at, look at Bow's chart yesterday on this. 188 to 190. Why? Because the outer line. Boom. Lines. Lines, lines, lines. I can't, I can't stress it enough, man. I really can't. Now let's go back to, go back to this big daddy and see what we can do with this. I just got my stops in. I'm all good. I covered half. Now I'm just riding even or a uh, fantasy cover. Simple, boring. Trading should be boring. Trading should be systematic, boring, like not crazy, not hyped up on crazy emotions, even though sometimes we all get there. It should just be, you just do what works every single day, man. That's how it is. Oh, what the hell? What is that? KZIA is running? Oh, what the hell? Things like this, guys, just stay safe, man. Don't try to short shit like this, man. This is so illiquid. Like, this is literally just like, what the hell is going on? Like, what's the volume on this? Let me, or I'll look at my DOS. Hold on one sec. Three hundred and seven thousand volume. This thing is just like, dude. Sympathies are coming up everywhere, man. This is a hot market, guys. If you guys are chasing in this market, you're you're you you got to be really be careful, man. This is a really hot market. In which case, chasing. Ah, uh, yeah, or not chasing. I rather longs are making money on the chase. I mean, adding, adding, adding to a loser and just trying to build a position and not admitting when you're wrong, not cutting a loser. You're dead, man. These things are running dollars. I mean, obviously you guys have seen K, what is it? KRTX in the last couple of days. Dude, what the fuck? 152. Dude, look at this stock. This stock was $18 two days ago. MYOV is another great example, man. Like, this is the market that we're in, guys. Actually, let me go to five day, three minute. Look at this. What is that, six bucks? Six bucks to 17? So just be safe, guys, man. It's crazy, it's madness, it's madness. All right, let me get any closing questions. Uh, or you know what, actually, really quick. Let me scroll up. I gotta, hold on, I wanna do this. Guys, see this right here, Tosh's public webinar? If you, this is the tweet that I just sent out as well for this webinar. This is information upon sign up. If you guys want information or get on a call with me and you're a prospective member, then, uh, then fill out this sheet guys. The link is in here. Uh, if you're a member, obviously already, that's okay. You don't necessarily have to, but of course put your information here guys, and we will get on the phone with you and help you out and we will get you started in MIC simultaneously. 
if you have not seen our two hour webinar that is absolutely amazing to new members or new traders in general, my, oops, my investing club dot co, not dot com dot co. Check this out. Reserve your seat as there is limited seats and limited calls. Uh, definitely get on the list and we will take care of you. But, uh, you know, give, give MIC a shot, man. It's six bucks a day. Just put that Starbucks down and come learn how to trade, baby. And get a network of guys, man. Get, get, a, get a tab member. Make Mike train your tab member. <laughs> Mike, are you available or do you already have, you already have a guy probably? Who needs a tab member? <laughs> DM's always open. There you go. So, guys, here's how to contact us. Let me, uh, let me just kind of wrap this up a little bit. Uh, you guys have been great today, man. This is a lot of fun. Uh, here's how to contact us, guys. Uh, myinvestingclub.com. I'll go all the way down. Um, Twitter, Instagram at myinvestingclub. Instagram for Alex. Instagram uh, and Twitter for Alex. Instagram for Val and Twitter are the same. Mine is tbradley90. Uh, tbradley90 underscore trader for Instagram. But the number one way to contact me is tosh at myinvestingclub.com. Like I said, sign up for the webinar, myinvestingclub.co. Um, we will get on a call with you or I'll get on a call with you and we will talk about your future at MIC or, you know, what's going wrong with your trading, how we can help you. And, uh, I don't think you'll regret it even in the slightest. So reach out guys. We're always open. I'm going to let you guys go right now unless somebody has a closing question. Otherwise you guys have been great, man. And we'll do this next week. Yeah. Thanks guys. Enjoy your nights. Dude, you got uh, you got Austin tomorrow, man. Thanks for showing up, guys. Uh, if you're not a member, reach out to me and I will help you out. Hey, traders, this is Tosh. I go by tbradley90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T-O-S-H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.